My name is Leah Denbach, and I'm the 17-year-old photographer from Collingwood, Ontario. I've been taking photographs since I was 13 years old. I saw some of her photographs and was very impressed by them. She thought they were terrible, though. She didn't think her work was any good. <laughs> Probably what interested me most is the fact that you can capture a moment in time. About three years ago, I started focusing on homeless people. I think uh, we got the idea first when we stumbled upon uh, the photography of Lee Jeffries, who's a British photographer. He is famous for his uh, photographs of homeless people. She was as impressed with his, with his work as I was. And I think within about a week we were in Toronto taking pictures of homeless people. I told some of my friends, and of course they were surprised. They often say like, wow, those are amazing. Like, how did you do that? And like, what are those people like? And what do they say to you? And what are your experiences like? Most people are very curious because they've never stopped and talked to the person sitting on the corner of the street. They just walk right by. Ah, can we go this way? So, I can see. so it goes across quite like this. We'll just wander the streets looking to see if there is any homeless people around. What do you think? My daughter's a photographer. Yeah. She's taking pictures of homeless people and we, yes. we pay our models ten dollars. Hi, okay. Would you be interested? Yes. How long have you been in Toronto, Patrick? Five years. But where do you come from? Trinidad. So before you moved to Toronto, you were in Trinidad? Yes. Okay. So what motivated you to move to Toronto? When my, my parents came, when I came with them to try to work and, and stuff like that, but... So you like Toronto okay, or...? Yes, it's all right. You miss, you miss Trinidad, though? Yes, I really have Trinidad in Central and food. I remember the very first time, uh, I was very nervous. And after that, I realized it's not really what I was thinking. Uh, it's really just like photographing any other person because they're no different than we are. Uh, the only difference is uh, we're just in the middle of the street as opposed to in a studio. So how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Has it been a pretty good day so far? Yeah, nice day, warm. Yeah, it is pretty warm. So how long have you been living in uh, Toronto, Mada? I've been here for 43 years. So you have family here still? They're all dead. They're all dead. Smile? Smile? No, you don't. Actually, just act your, act normal. You don't have to smile. When my birthday was May 11th, okay? Happy birthday. I thought it was a strange subject for someone so young, but when she showed me the photos, it was amazing because their whole story is written right in their face, and she captured it amazingly accurately. I'm a firm believer that things should be equal, at least to the point of not having people on the streets having to beg uh, just because of their life circumstances and no one's helping them or doing anything about it. And I think. Uh... Also, my, my wife's story has had a lot of influence upon her. It, it, can't, it uh, couldn't help but influence her because it's been such a, a big part of our lives. When I was three, I was found on the crowded streets of Calcutta, India, and a police officer found me. He saw that I had three deep cuts on my head and I was probably bleeding at the time. And he knew that Mother Teresa never refused any children at the orphanage, near Malashishu Bhavan, which in English means home of the little children. And so Mother Teresa, she, she looked after me for two years, and then I was adopted by Eldon and Audrey Bell of Stainer, and I grew up in Stainer. I had difficulty with the snow. I didn't like snow at all, and. It was way too cold. <laughs> I was quiet and shy, but I soon picked up and I became more lively and happy. I've known that my whole life and just knowing that like my, my own blood was in that situation. So clearly it's a very personal matter. 
no longer do I uh, walk on the street and question why that person is, be is uh, in that position or think anything badly about that individual. Now I see them as like a friend or pass by with kind words, often ask them how they are because really it, that could have been me. Lucy once had big dreams. I've always been a writer, like journaling and short stories and whatnot, she told my dad and I. But now it's hard to keep up with the stuff you even love, because it's survival. Lucy's problem is that she is an opioid addict. I've been an opioid addict since I was 14, she said. We've been traveling to uh, various cities throughout North America, such as uh, New York City, Toronto, Scarborough, Barrie, taking pictures of homeless people. I've gotten around 70 photographs, 40 of which were good enough to make it into my first book, which is called Nowhere to Call Home, Photos and Stories of the Homeless. So today we're in Barrie, Ontario, uh, photographing the homeless people at the Barrie Bayside Mission Salvation Army. Um, we have about 10 people that we're gonna be photographing today and it should go well. So how long have you been living in Barrie, Chris? Um, I've been here for almost three weeks. Three weeks? Where do you come from? Winnipeg. Winnipeg? Oh. Traveled a long way. I was in a program for a year and a half. Okay. I lost my three-year-old boy and my wife and my suicide. Actually, could I get one of you showing me your necklace, by any chance? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Does it have any meaning? Yeah, you? it does. Most definitely. <laughs> That's fun, my girl. Okay. It all seems to be something that just happens in their life, like a death in the family, uh, addiction to drugs, uh, mental health problems taking over that have just sent them into a plummet spiral downwards and not having people around them to be able to help them get out of that and being left completely alone is usually um, what ends up leading these people to being on the streets. Uh, this oh, way a little bit. The, the late so with my book, I'm trying to portray two goals. First of which is to shine a spotlight on the plight of homelessness because it is such a big issue in our nation and world right now that's only getting worse. And second, I'd like to humanize homeless people because so often they are seen as subhuman individuals. All the money for my book is going to be going back to the homeless shelter, so when I'm photographing people down in Barrie, I can tell them that the money for these photos is going to go right back to helping them. Things kind of turned around on me and uh, I had to get up and get out. I was on a park bench uh, here and there, on and off the street, um, so it's just uh, trying to find my way back. As we got to know the people and and uh, uh, hear their stories, it's been uh, it's been a very rewarding experience. They're all very different. They all have very different stories. Catherine, although Catherine was very personable and friendly, I could not help but get the impression that life had not been easy for her. Her eyes conveyed a note of sadness that she was unable to hide, tried as she might. Speaking of her family, she said, perhaps half-jokingly, my sister's got my mother's blonde hair, and all I got was her arthritis. When the photo shoot was over, and it was time to say goodbye, Catherine grabbed my dad's hand, and with obvious emotion in her voice, she said, it was so nice of you to do this. Most people just ignore me. I was thinking about each of Leah's photos as their own life stories that just as I have a life story, their life story is just as important as mine or anybody else's.
I hope to be known. Um, and I hope that uh, people around the world will see my photos one day and that they'll be seen for years to come and they won't be forgotten. And that it'll, um, it'll make a big enough impact on people 